In this video, I will explain how the line spectrum of hydrogen atom is formed. I'm going to use illustrations to explain the formations of Lyman series, Baumann series, Pashtun series, Bracket series, and also P1 series. I'm going to guide you step by step on how to do the calculations for the energy of a photon and the wavelength of photon and also the energy change due to electron transitions. Hey, I'm Teacher Tan. If you like my videos, do remember to click on the subscribe button below so that you won't miss any notifications when I update my channel. How to form emissions line spectrum from hydrogen atom? When hydrogen gas are being put into discharge tube, there are a few observations that we can make. The first one, we can see the discharge tube glows and then when the light from the discharge tube being passed through the prism, it will split into various colors to give the emissions line spectrum. What is happening inside the discharge tube? How can this result in the formations of emissions line spectrum of hydrogen? Before a high voltage is applied, electrons in hydrogen gas are in the ground state n equals to 1. However, when a high voltage is being applied, the energy is supplied to the hydrogen gas. This causes the hydrogen molecules inside the discharge tube start to break up into hydrogen atoms. And the electrons in the hydrogen atoms also gain the energy and they get excited and move to higher energy levels, which is greater than n equals to 1. When at at high energy levels, the electrons they are unstable. Hence, they will fall back to lower energy levels by emitting photons with specific energies, wavelengths or frequencies. When these photons of specific energies, wavelengths or frequency passing through the prism, discrete lines will be formed. And these discrete lines are the emission line spectrum of hydrogen. The hydrogen emission line spectrum can form in UV light region which give rise to the Lyman series or it can also be formed in visible light region to give Baumann series or it can also form in infrared regions to give Pastian series, Bracket series and also P1 series. How to produce the hydrogen emissions line spectrums in Lyman series, Baumann series, Pashtun series, Bracket series, and P1 series? For Lyman series, electrons at higher energy levels must fall to lower energy level n equals to 1. For example, to form the first line in the Lyman series, electrons must fall from n equals to 2 to n equals to 1. To form the second line in the Lyman series, electron must fall from n equals to 3 again to n equals to 1. To form the third line in the Lyman series, electron at higher energy level n equals to 4 again must fall to lower energy level n equals to 1. To form the fourth line in the Lyman series, electron must fall from higher energy level n equals to 5 again to lower energy level n equals to 1 and so on. To produce line spectrums in the Baumann series, electrons from higher energy level must fall to n equals to 2 electrons from higher energy level must fall to n equals to 2. For example, to produce the first line in the Baumann series, electrons must fall from n equals to 3 to n equals to 2. To form the second line in the Baumann series, electrons must fall from n equals to 4 again to n equals to 2. To form the third line in the Baumann series, electron must fall from n equals to 5 to n equals to 2. To form the fourth line in the Baumann series, electron must fall from n equals to 6 to n equals to 2, and so on. Because Baumann series, the emissions occurs in the visible light 
region. Therefore, the discrete line produced on the line spectrums will be colored and we can see the color with our naked eyes. But for Lyman series, because it occurs in the ultraviolet light region, we can't see the lines with our naked eyes. The same principles goes for passions, brackets and p fan series. For passion series, electrons from higher energy levels will fall to n equals to 3. For bracket series, electrons from higher energy levels will fall to n equals to 4. And for the p fan series, electrons from higher energy level will fall to lower energy level n equals to 5 to produce the discrete line in each of the line spectrums in each of the series. I will move on to discuss the calculations corresponding to the electron transitions. So there are three steps to follow through. Step number one, list out the electron transitions based on what is being given in the question. Then in step number two, we choose an appropriate formula. In step number three, we substitute the information in step one into the formula in step two to get the final answer. In example one, we want to determine the energy of photon emitted to form third line in Lyman series. In Lyman series. So step number one, we need to list out the electron transitions corresponding to the third line in the Lyman series. But remember, for Lyman series, electron fall from higher energy level to n equals to 1. So the first line is from n equals to 2 to n equals to 1. So second line is from n equals to 3 to n equals to 1. So third line in the Lyman series therefore is corresponding to the electron transition from n equals to 4 to n equals to 1. So this is first step, list out the electron transition corresponding to the line in each of the series. And in step number two, we need to choose an appropriate formula to calculate the energy of photon which is corresponding to that particular electron transition. So since we want to find the energy of photon, then the best formula is energy of photon equals to the difference in energy which is equal to the RH Rybert constant multiplied by 1 over n initial square minus 1 over n final square. So the electron transition is from n equals to 4 to n equals to 1. So means that initially the electron is at n equals to 4. So our n initial therefore is equal to 4. And n final is equal to 1. So by substituting this into the equation, then we get our final answer for the energy of photon which is equal to negative 2.04 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joules. So one thing to take note is now we are calculating energy therefore the Rybert constant that we choose must be 2.18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joules. The unit joules is corresponding to the energy Therefore, we need to choose this as our Rybert constant. And the second thing you need to take note is the negative. We definitely will get negative because photon is emitted, means that energy is being released. And this negative basically telling us that the energy is being released in terms of photon when the electron move from n equals to 4 to n equals to 1. In example 2, we want to determine the wavelength of photon emitted to form the fourth line in bracket series. Bracket series, electron drop from higher energy level to n equals to 4 in order to form hydrogen line spectrums in bracket series. Therefore, first line in bracket series is corresponding to electron transition from n equals to 5 to n equals to 4. Second line 
corresponding to electron transition from n equals to 6 to n equals to 4 and third line corresponding to electron transition from n equals to 7 to n equals to 4 and the fourth line therefore is corresponding to the electron transition from energy level n equals to 8 to energy level n equals to 4 so this is our first step to list out the electron transition for the line based on the series. In step number two, we choose an appropriate formula which relates wavelength of photon that we want to find with electron transitions. So the most appropriate formula therefore is the Rybert equation, one over lambda or one over wavelength equals the Rybert constant multiplied by one over n1 square minus one over n2 square and n1 must be smaller than n2. Our energy level n equals to 4 is smaller, therefore it should be n1 and energy level n equals to 8 is the n2. After identify this, then we can substitute them into the formula to get the wavelength of photon which is equal to 1.945 times 10 to the power of negative 6 meter. Here, the Rybert constant that we use is 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 per meter. This is the Rybert constant that we need to use when we want to find wavelength. We must take note of the unit to find wavelength the Rybert constant that we need to choose must have the unit per meter. After we get the wavelength of photon in meter, sometimes we want to convert it to nanometer. So how do we do the conversions? We must know the relationship between 1 meter and nanometer. Then only we can do the conversion. So must remember that 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the power of negative 9 meter. By knowing this relationship, then we can do the conversions easily. So how do we do the conversion? So we just need to multiply the wavelength in meter with 1 nanometer per 1 times 10 to the power of negative 9 meter. So the meter must be the denominator. Then we can cancel out. And what we get the answer will be the wavelength in nanometer. 